Good morning. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice in the streets. Now, well, this particular passage we're reading for Proverbs chapter 1, I just laid on my heart that we've been so many years and asking people to pray for the, the farmer's market ministry Saturday mornings. I thought maybe I'd tell you how and what's going on. And this came afterwards, Proverbs chapter 1, through my Bible reading. And there have been few people, few, that have come up to us and say, why are you here? What are you doing? What cause gives you this? And some of the few... <laughs> Have been the police officers questioning me, ready to throw me off the premise and get me out of the area. But wisdom cries without, she utters her voice in the streets. Wisdom for a street preacher is preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And literally, now the, the, the new position of, of the farmer's market where we are. I am now actually on the street. Before where we were, I was on the sidewalk. So, thanks to the new position of the farmer's market, I am now literally a street preacher. At Magolia and Wall Street. I'm on Wall Street. She cries in the chief places of concourse. Now, concourse, if you look over here, Dictionary. We don't ever go to the Greek. We go to the 1828 dictionary. A moving, flowing, a running together, a meeting, assembly of men. So you see right here the definition. And what better concourse, what better business, what better gathering of people at a place of a market? And throughout the book of Acts, you even find Paul visit the markets. Paul's ministry were to sailing cities where he went and many of the disciples and Christians throughout the book of Acts and throughout history, they would go to where people were. And what greater place would be a seaport? And those seaports, you would find, you know, the vegetables, the fish, the, you find all the needs. I mean, there was no one common store. Like we have today. In the openings of the gates, in the gates in this where the city opened, you can only get into the cities by gates. And the gates of the city, I don't know if all the gates or one specific gate in the city, was the city hall, the meeting. Elders sat there. You find Job and Lot. In the city, she utters her voice, or excuse me, utters her word saying. Okay, so we have been in the city of Daytona Beach, Florida. We have been in the city of Norwich, Connecticut. So I have scripture ground for what I do, and, and a lot of people come up, one of the things, like, that's not what Jesus would do, or you're turning people away, and I'll just tell them, you don't know your Bible, you have not studied the Bible, and if you want a lesson on street preaching, I, I tell them Proverbs chapter 1, and sometimes I will quote it to them, and I say, you need to study the book of Acts, you need to study the, the, the life of Jesus. You realize one time Jesus got in a boat, went off the shore a little bit, and preached in Luke, uh, Mark chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, the parable of the sower. You realize he, he sat in the treasury of the temple and taught the people? He taught the people in, in people's homes? He taught, you know, the Sermon on the Mount was not in the church building. Paul Spoke to people in Mars Hill. There was no church building. 
There was a time that Paul, uh, one, of the, one of the ship journeys, that he met with, with the women and they prayed on the beach. That wasn't a church building. So in the city, she utters her words saying, now, when, as a street preacher, and if you are a true biblical street preacher, you are coming out of your mouth wisdom. What is wisdom? You're telling the lost they're going to hell without Jesus Christ. You're going to hell with religion. You're going to hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. That the only way to get to heaven, if you want to go to heaven, is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. That's wisdom. Come to my church. Will you come to my... That's not wisdom. You don't want to speak to people? Get yourself gospel tracts and pass them out. That's wisdom. A gospel tract is wisdom. An invitation is not wisdom. And it goes, how long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And we've been doing the farmer's market ministry five or six years. And there are times that <coughs> we see the same people week after week after week. You say, well, why do you keep going back? Well, repetitious. One day they may need, they may come to us with a need. And then we do see new people we've never met week after week after week after week. There isn't a week that goes by that we have not seen a face, or we have seen a face that we have not seen before. And whether they're going to hear me preaching the gospel or they're going to get a gospel track from my daughter. And there are simple people, you know what? They believe what they believe. They believe what their religion teaches, and that's... That's fine with them. I got one guy there, you know, he believes that after death, it's over and done with. That's simple. And the scorners delight in their scorning. Oh, boy, we've had scorning. We had one time in early, early beginning, we had a, 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 a trash barrel put where we sat with, with fish. Sitting in the floor of the sun. We've had beets, little radishes or beets thrown at us, radishes, I believe it was. We've had people come up and, you know, hey, shut up, oh, you know, and just scorning is part of public ministry. And you better get over it and you better realize it. You better know that scorning is going to happen. They scorn Jesus Christ. You know why many people don't go out and witness? You know why many people say, well, come to my church Sunday morning? Because they don't want the scorning and let the pastor get the bad rap. For with the heart man believes unto righteous, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. Hey, if you don't speak about your mouth about Jesus, that's part of the salvation. And I don't think that's Romans Road. Should be, but. And fools hate knowledge. There are people that walk right by us. There are people that sit near us. There are people that just don't want to hear about Jesus. They're simple. They're scorning. And, and, and they hate. They're fools. And in our time of, of the public ministry at the farmer's market, we've had anywhere up to 10, about 10 times maybe. Daytona Police Department called on us. And each every time we've had to leave, call call our lawyers, and then we end up coming back that we were doing the right and that the city was wrong and the police department's wrong and the farmer's market's wrong. I'm not boasting. I'm just saying, listen, I'm no schmuck. To show up what to do. Listen, I've called the Christian Law Association. I, I have a lawyer that I call that helps me out. I, I have other street uh, preacher friends that I talk with and get advice and get knowledge on. 
And before you come up with a public ministry, you got you got to look into what you're going to do. Now, my personal opinion, and I've had lawyers tell me different. Call a lawyer, a Christian law station, they get the information. But my personal opinion is if it says no trespassing, don't trespass. You got to know what you're doing. And so it says, turn you at my reproof. That's what you want them to do. A street preacher is out there planting and watering. God gives an increase. I never saw wind. I have never sold wind a day of my life. And I've been involved in the street ministry about 2006, 2007 to present. I don't win them. I know the Bible says he that wins his souls is wise. I am part of God's equation of planting seed, watering seed. God gives the increase. And again, he that wins his souls is wise. Look, wisdom cries without the street. So we're there, verse 23. We're there not, hey, look at me. Look what I can do. Look at, no, we're there to preach the gospel. I am not there. I'm there witnessing to the lost people. The street ministry is lost people. I am not there to talk about the 666. I am not there to talk about the dispensation. I am not there to talk about the gap theory. I'm not there talking about the fallen angels. I am not there to talk about the dragon. I'm not there to talk about the book of Revelation. I am there because there are lost people and I preach the gospel. Now you want about the, you know want to know about the tribulation period? You want to know about the six six six? You want to know about the gospel of Matthew? We will set a date. We will go off together, and we will have a Bible study. My sole mission, and we're talking about the ministry here. We're talking about to lost people that there is a heaven and there is a hell and heaven's by Jesus and hell's by rejecting Jesus Christ. Now I may mention this, the, the, the tribulation because the tribulation is coming after the rapture. Rapture is the next great spot. But I am not going to talk about Noah's Ark. That has nothing to do with equation. I may go back to Adam and Eve and explain to him where sin came from. Since, you know, Adam and Eve with the fruit, and I'm at a farmer's market, put one and one together. Behold, I will pour out my spirit into you. That's God. That's God using you inspirationally. That God, through the Holy Spirit that's in you, I will make known my words unto you. You don't go to the farmer's market. You don't go to the street ministry. You don't go knocking on door. Oh, you know about my church? You know how great my church is? Would you like to come to my church? How great my church is? It's wonderful, my church. That's not the words of God. Find me one place that Jesus or Paul said, uh, bring him to church. As a matter of fact, bring him to church. The only way to bring them to church, if they get saved, and once they get saved, they are the body of the church. Jesus said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. That Philippian jailer that came with Paul and Silas at midnight came in. He said, well, what must I do to be saved? you got to go to our church. Let us out Sunday morning we'll all go to church. That's not what Paul and Silas said. Cornelius sent for Peter, and Peter came, and, and Peter did not say, go to church. And if you check the message of Peter, he preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the gospel. You're to make known the words of the word of God, not the words of your pastor, not the words of what you think, not the, the words of politicians. You're to make the words of the King James 1611 Bible. I'm one of them people, it's King James or it's nothing at all. 
Because I have called and refused. That's going to happen. Not everybody's going to get saved. I'm going to go so far. If many people get saved from your public ministry, you're doing it wrong. Because broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many that go there at straight is the gate that leads to life. And the few enter there at. Some people just say, you know, they, they converse them to say a prayer and or even they'll say the prayer for them. And you're not going to heaven that way. I stretch out my hand and no man regard it. You're lending them lost people a hand. What's the hand? The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're putting your hand out. Stop. Stop your life right now. On the path you're going. You're going to hell. And you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And no man regardeth it. You're not going to get the majority of people to listen to you. But you have set at naught all my counsel. Like I said, we've been there five or six years, and there are three vendors there. That we have been there for the five or six years. And they sit in that seat. And they sit in their seat. And they sell their goods. And they talk to other vendors. And not once. Have they exalted. Trusted. Or put their faith. Or give any credit to the Lord Jesus Christ. That we preach. If you want 100% results and, and gratification, don't get part in the street ministry. And would none of my reproof, there, there are many people who are not going to listen. They won't listen, and they're, they're not going to adhere to what the Word of God, they don't care about the Word of God. Then again, you're going to make, a, you will make a lot of friends. You'll get a lot of people who like you. You'll get a lot of people who, who will respect you. We got one guy there. He doesn't want to have any. <coughs> he doesn't want to have anything to do with Jesus Christ. But he respects the Constitution right that we can do what we do. And we've talked to him about God. We we give him gospel tracts and he realized Jesus himself who is the word of God came on this planet for 33 and a half years and there were people that walked away from him they didn't listen that that rich young ruler walked away 10 lepers nine of them walked away <laughs> and it goes on verse 26 God speaking don't you dare apply 26 as a, this ain't you. This is God. I don't laugh. I'm in tears. And I've heard Christians who go out and whatever the public ministry, I, I heard about, and they start laughing. It ain't no joke when people reject Jesus Christ. And if you think it's a joke, you got your priorities wrong. And then you read verses 26 to 33, the, the, the reactions of the people are they're going to reject Jesus Christ. Or they're going to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me just quick give you a little history of what happened, how we got where we were. I was working at Winn-Dixie on Beachside. And God, you don't say, I don't know how it ever happened. But God would have it one day, I'm coming home from work, I worked overnight. Uh, I usually got out maybe four or five o'clock in the morning, and God would have me to take a shortcut. I would go down A one A to International and come home that way. But God would have me one day to churn on Orange Avenue. How or why I don't remember, but I turn on Orange Avenue. And then st instead of staying on Orange Avenue, which you can, you can, you can go up Orange Avenue 
owe it to Nova or Ridgewood. I turned right on what is called City Island. I turned right on City Island Road. This is Saturday morning, bright and early. And as I come in around City Island Road, there's a Jackie Robinson baseball stadium there. And it was early enough that there were people setting up. Now, business was not yet. People would get to the farmer's market to set up very early in the morning. And the signs were up, too. Farmer's market. Now, farmer's market is the kind of thing that my wife, who has passed on to glory, she liked those kind of things. So I said, ooh. So I got home. I told my wife, Tracy, I said, well, I said, let me get some sleep. And then we'll go to the farmer's market. And we're at the farmer's market. We'll take, let's take a look, see what they got. And we'll, get, we'll pass out some gospel tracts. That's all we have intended. So I, I, I took my nap. We got up and we went to the farmer's market. Me, Tracy, and my daughter, Rachel Ann. To look around and to pass out some gospel tracts. So we parked the car. We crossed the road. We're in the farmer's market. And Tracy has already has just started. She's got her first gospel track. And a woman approaches her and says, I am in charge of this thing or whatever. You can't do that here. We don't allow religion. We don't allow politics. We don't allow. No, not here. We rent this spot from the city of Daytona Beach. You're not allowed. You can buy or you can leave. We left. And I'm wondering how this is a public spot. This is taxpayer's spot. How on earth can the city of Daytona Beach rent taxpayer's spot and tell me I can't do something? There's the fuel for the argument. There is the fuel of the ministry. So I made some inquiries. Iniquities. I sinned too. I made some inquiries and come to find out it is perfectly legal for the city to do that. But City Island Road, or City Island too, there's a park, there's public bathrooms, there's a library, there's a courthouse annex, and then there's a the ballpark. And there are sidewalks. And I told Tracy, I said, what we're going to do, is we're going to go, if they will not allow us to go and pass out gospel tracts or talk to the people, we're going to go there, we're going to hold signs, we're going to pass out gospel tracts, and I'm going to preach the Bible. And she was overjoyed. Now, in order to get to the parking lot into the farmer's market, you had to cross to the island road. We were going to park, um, we were going to be on the sidewalk, and you would either have to you would have to pass us to go into the market or come out of the market to get to your car or get to where the market is. <coughs> We're going to hold signs, pass out gospel track, and I was going to preach. That is the beginning of the farmer's market. Daytona, and this is over the old by the Jackie Robinson Stadium. So we were there. We started preaching. Boy, did we set there dander and fire. And we went three, four, five, six months, pretty much. And they didn't do nothing. And we were there for three, four, five, six hours. And then around Christmas time, I know it's around Christmas time, which is not Christian. They hired a DJ to play music. And that DJ was hired for the sole reason... To shut me up. He said, Sally, how do you know that? That DJ walked up to me and said, I'm here to shut you down. I said, no. I said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but God said, my, my word shall not pass away. You do what you do, and I'll do what you do. And we've had DJs. We had a bongo man. He played his bongos and, and his boombox. That was five or six years ago. We're still at the farmer's market, and they're gone. And we pray. Listen, you know what I pray for those DJs? I pray for their salvation. I pray that God would give them 
greater work on Saturday morning and say, hey, you know what? Hey, I'd be at the farmer's market, but I was offered this much money. I'm going to go do this gig. I didn't call fire down for them. I prayed for their souls. Matter of fact, the guy who played the bongos gave Tracy a gift one time. And, you know, of course, he's a Christian. He's there trying to overpower the word of God. I don't believe that. But we met him at another location. And he was thriving. He said, I'm happy you're here. And we've had to deal with the homeless men and people. And I've got to admit, I met, I have met in my life a man that has been aboard a UFO and they did experiments and stuff like that. Uh, we met other Christians and we, we've heard about their work and they appreciate our work. And we've had the police called on us. And I've been very respectable to the police. Matter of fact, there's time we carried on great conversations. And there was much time, much time, and even still kind of today, that there is a Daytona Police Department police officer at the farmer's market because of us. Waiting for me, I guess, to do something illegal. But we've had a few times where they actually told us, you know, we can't be here. And I said, well, officer, that's fine. I'm going to walk away. I'm going to call my lawyer, and, and usually I say the same thing. If my lawyer tells me I have the right to be here, Lord willing, I'll be here next Saturday morning. If my lawyer tells me by chance I am in the wrong, I apologize to you right now. I will be back to apologize to the people at the farmer's market that I have done wrong. But right now, if I have done wrong, officer, let me apologize. But I... Knew already checking it out. I was not in the wrong. Now let me tell you, for the very fact, very informational fact is, whether the old location or new location, we are on the sidewalk, and the sidewalk has been granted by the United States Supreme Court as a domain that no one can claim, whether renting or private property. That street preaching can be done on a sidewalk legally. Now, right now, we're at the farmer's market. We are actually on the street. You say, well, what, you're not on the sidewalk. We've done that battle. On the street, I've come to find out by my lawyer is a... Uh, uh, oh, I'll try to think of the word again. There's a legal term. I forget what it is. But it's a public forum. Forum. And that they close off the street, but that street is public. You can't stop the public. In other words, if I'm there preaching the gospel, or somebody's there for the Republicans, or somebody's there for the Democrats, or somebody's there for whatever, and they're passing out leaflets or whatever like that, you can't stop them, even though they call the cops and try to stop them. So we have done that battle almost every single year. And we come out victorious where the farmer's market does, comes out a loser. And I, through the Lord Jesus Christ, I gain more gown. When we're, we're at the new location now, which, which is the Mongolia uh, Avenue or Street. They shut the whole road down for the farmer's market. Well, we showed up on the sidewalk, and I knew we could be on the sidewalk, and I knew the sidewalk was legal, and the cops came along. And this is the first time ever I've had with my lawyer on the phone with the police department. My lawyer talking to the three of us, he told me, he said, you know, handle the situation properly. But if, because the cop told me he's going to arrest me if I continue preaching. My, my lawyer said, if, if he arrests you, if you decide to get arrested, you give me a call and I'll defend you. And then for a while, we had this little segregated area that where we were supposed to be. And I went there until my lawyer could check things out and contact the city and everybody. I had the Daytona. I was told the Daytona Police Department attorney or lawyer 
thanked me for, hey, you know, he walked away from the city. He did not get arrested. I want to thank you for him handling the situation. And he was proper and respectful to my police officers. And he left and he got everything. He went to his little spot that they had for him. And then the law found out that I was correct. I could be where I was going to be. But guess what? I was on a sidewalk at the corner of Mongolia and Wall Street. And my lawyer showed up. And he, he's there physically. And you know, he says, you know what? And he told I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give names, but he told the director of by the city of Daytona Beach, Florida, Mr. Hayward, that's me. If he wants to preach and teach and pass out leaflets on this street, he has the right. Because the street is public domain. Well, guess what? Stolly's off the sidewalk now. Stolly's in the middle of the road. Had they kept their mouth shut. <laughs> I mean, I watched the People's Court. That's, that's my law 101. And it's amazing. Some people take a case to court. And they end up losing. And in some cases, they'll take a case to court. They're the, they're the plaintiff. And the defendant walks away with money. I have walked away with blessings of God by them complaining about me. And I've got a testimony by the Daytona Police Department. You know, that guy's respectful. And I've had people go ask the Daytona police, you know, what do you, you know, what do you think? You know, my little my little disciple, they go up to and they ask, what do you think about that guy over there? And there have been they have been I have been told by these people that if it wasn't for the badge and uniform, man, they would come over and compliment me for what I do and have respect to what I do. But because you know they're 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 ambassadors of the city of Daytona as police officers, they've got to take the side of both the complainant and for me the defendant. And so we've moved to a little area on the sidewalk to work right now in the middle of the road. And people have to cross by us. Mongolia runs from east to west. And if you're going to check out the whole farmer's market, we are dead center between east and west, point A and point B. So, now one thing bad about where we are now, where we weren't, where we were before it, like I said, we had the Jackie Robinson Stadium. And the ball games they would have, and they would have, uh, they had the ballerina one thing one time. They had Cub Scouts. I'm, I'm just naming things to talk. To, they had other activities at the ballpark, and they would park at the parking lot. And they would have to cross the road, go over the, the farmer's market to get into the stadium. Well, boy, I tell you what, that was great for us because we would go and get all those people. And there were many times that they would be lined up to get into the Jackie Robinson Stadium, and we would go right up into the line and start passing out gospel tracks. And they couldn't stop us because it's public sidewalk. So, I mean, it's a wonderful, great ministry the Lord has given me in his heart. And it, it's a thing that it has built my prayer list of people's names. And, and they may not even be named. It may be a particular vendor. Or there's, there's one where there's, there's a, a mother and two children in my prayer list. And I got D.B. Uh, FM, Daytona Beach Farmers Market, in my prayers list. So we've had opposition, and we know, according to the parable 
of the sower, we know Satan's there. We know God's there. We know the, 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 the seed gets out. We know the seed's rejected. And we see the seed being thrown on the wayside, which we go pick it up. And we've got friends there. We've got enemies there. And we are in a position right now where it's more aggravating to the vendors that hate us. But we are now closer to them because they complained and called. Not, and we were also told, but let me finish. They complain, and they're complaining to the police department. And my lawyer has said, okay, you can go here, closer. And listen, the, 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 the farmer's market drew out these rules, and they got these, these metal signs, and they are absolutely wrong and unlawful. The restrictions they put on me or anybody <clears throat> with the First Amendment rights. Listen, as much as we want to pass out gospel tracts or pass out uh, uh, the name of Jesus, political parties can come down and pass out their information. We have done battle with the Jehovah Witnesses. And you say, whoa, whoa, Jehovah Witnesses been there. He said, what battle do you do with them? I just walk up to them and say, uh, Thomas said, my Lord, my God. That's that's my that's my bullet for for Jehovah Witnesses. Thomas said, "My Lord, my no, shut up. Tell me what Thomas meant, and that there's no rebuke by Jesus Christ. And you say Jesus is not God. And then Silas would turn his micro microphone on, and he'll start preaching against the Jehovah Witnesses of the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, tactfully." In order to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you must believe that Jesus is God. And there are some religions out there that say that Jesus is not God. You can't be saved by them because Jesus must be God. And by the quote of the Bible, the Gospel of John, that Thomas said, my Lord, my God. And I turn around and I see the Jehovah Witnesses packing up, leaving. Amen. Glory to God. I get just as happy as the Jehovah Witness leaving as I drive by and see a bar is closed. It's called the Hayward Family Ministry. Tracy was there until the times that she was in the hospital and then finally went home to glory. There have been times I was not able to be there because the hospital and medical uh, were not there for rain. Sometimes we show up and then it rains. <laughs> There are lost people at the farmer's market. There's lost people everywhere, and they need prayers. And there are lost people that fight us. They need prayers. There are Christians there that fight us. And of course, in the name of, of Jesus Christ, they need prayers. And there are Christians there, they're, 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 they're thrilled. <laughs> And it's amazing with his ministry that we will meet Christians and say, you know, we're visiting from somewhere. And they go to church. I have never seen what you do. And when you show them the Bible and they're like, how come our church doesn't know about this? <laughs> because your pastor is blind and doesn't know nothing. That's why. And his excuse is many times from many churches, well, just bite them to church. I'll do the work for you. Or there's no knowledge of the scriptures. And many times I, I will tell these people, whether they're for the ministry or against the ministry, turning people away, I said, what about Paul and Mars Hill? Was that not a public spot? Was not Jesus who got in a boat in Mark chapter 4, and, and preach to the people on the beach. Hey, we're in Daytona Beach, I tell them.
Did not Paul himself say he went into the to the uh, to the markets? Street preaching is a bound doctrinal principle that is true. Elijah, Elijah street preach all over the place. Noah preached, and I don't think he built a, 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 a church building. He was too busy building the ark. You know, some Baptists would think he built a church building. That, you know, Baptists are going crazy, too. Throughout the Old and the Gospel and the New Testament, there is street preaching. And this is just the, the, the great testimony of what the Lord's given me. I've had people in the ministry try to tell me, well, maybe it's done. Maybe it's finished. With Maybe God wants you some. Why are you trying to close the door on me when God keeps open? Listen, where we are now is a great, wonderful, absolutely wonderful presence. I got to talk to a woman last Saturday. I got her name for for my prayer. I don't. I, I just say, you know, what's your first name? And I put the first name down, and then, like I said, D B F F M. It's on the beach farmers market. So when I go through my prayer list, oh, oh, oh yeah, it's from the farmers market. And I pray for each and every the DJ. We got DJs right now, but we can do our thing. And they can do their thing. It doesn't bother me no more. They don't bother me. Matter of fact, God has given me another tool. For everything against, God has given me something for. Now, how many people have I led personally to the Lord Jesus Christ at the farmer's market? Zilch. I know that's a failure of your typical Baptist church today. How many people have gotten saved later on that I am unawares? I have no idea. I have made I have maybe planted a seed or I have watered the crop. But it's not me that saves them. It is God that saves them. And I will know what God has done from the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market when I get the glory one day. Maybe he don't want me to know who gets saved. Up. Maybe I boast in pride and get myself valued in numbers. And maybe God's preventing me from doing that. Amen. Glory to God. But let me tell you, if one person got saved from, the, from the, my preaching the farmer's market, glory to God. If I get to heaven one day, we're all in glory. One day, and somebody comes running up and wraps their arms around me and says, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Who are you? Well, my name is Fred. You don't know who I am. But because you're preaching, now maybe not that day, but you're preaching. I got. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Or maybe they, they didn't say anything because you know they were scared. But you know what? As they're walking by, you know what that guy's preaching. I don't want my friends to know. I don't want my spouse to know. But you know, I want to believe what that man is preaching. I don't know. And never mind. For the fact is, I don't know how many gospel tracks my daughter gets out. I'm going to tell you right now, pretty much she gets more people to say thank you and receives a gospel track than she'll get, no, I don't need it, or I'm good, or anything like that. My daughter will hold a fistful of gospel tracks and have to walk over and reload, I call it. And there are many that say, no, I don't want one, or, and there are a few that be jerks about it. But let me ask you something, Christian. The Hayward Family Ministry, going all the way back to 2006, 2007, I forgot when it started. It involved me, Stiley Hayward. 
It's about my daughter, Rachel Ann Hayward. It is about my other siblings. It is about my wife who's going home to glory, Lisa Hayward. It is about my, my second wife who's going home to glory, Tracy Hayward. And I'm hoping, praying for a third wife that she get involved in, in the ministry. Listen, I'm praying right now. I pray the Lord will give me a third wife. And I was just started praying. I'd like to have her be able to sing hymns. I would love to have a, a wife of mine to be at the ministry, the public ministry, and have my daughter pass out gospel tracts, have her hold the sign or, or pass out gospel, and have me preach the word of God. And then after that, I would love to have her to step up and start singing hymns. That would be a truly blessing. If you would join me in that prayer. Can you imagine a public ministry by the Haywards? There is preaching, there is gospel tract, and there would be gospel singing. Can you imagine what the Lord Jesus Christ will do for the glory of the Father? Now let me ask you something, Christian. What kind of ministry do you have with your spouse and your children? And we don't ever go in the name of a church. I don't believe in a public ministry. All right, we're, we're from such and such church. I, I don't believe in that. I believe you're going to be in a public ministry. You go in the name of Jesus Christ alone. You don't go in the promotion of a church. And I got one church right now angry for saying that. You know, if a man comes up to me and says, listen, you know, I'm looking for a church or, or my church. I'm like, I will take him off to a son, and then I will give him names of the church. And it may not be my home church. <gasps> Listen, if the guy tells me where he lives and I know a church that's close by him or next to him, I will give him the church that's closer to him if it's a proper biblical church. But I'm not there to preach church. I'm there to preach the gospel. Jesus said, go in the world and preach the gospel. I'm a hellfire damnation preacher. And I've even been told by, by one of my Christian friends, I hope that I hate that. You know, turn or burn. I say that all the time when I'm preaching. Because it's true. And I'm just telling you, I am marvelously blessed by God. He's given me a loud enough voice. He's given me a family that is respected and taken part cleanly in the ministry. And there's nothing more to get in the car on the way home and talk about what God has done that day, good or bad. 